Good morning and welcome to Erasmus TV. Fijke Siebsma is an alumnus from Rotterdam School of Management. He's part of the Outbreak Management Team and gives advice to the Dutch government. He has been named several times most influential businessman of the Netherlands. Oh, and he's our guest today. Very welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah. You have another title. The title in... We call it in Dutch speciaal gezant, special envoy in English. You barely hear it. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, what is it and what can you do differently that a minister or another member of parliament can't do? Well, uh, by the way, I'm not part of the outbreak management team. I'm indeed the special corona envoy uh, for the Dutch cabinet. And I'm trying to help and to facilitate uh, the developments around corona and how to get out of this crisis. And what can I do? Uh, I know the business environment very well. I know many of the providers of tests or other materials or vaccines or etc. very well. And I can help the government to speed up our reaction uh, in this corona crisis. Yeah, and and you well, and you helped us because last Wednesday uh, the government announced that it will gradually uh, loosen the measures against the coronavirus. But Correct. before that was possible, we needed to have enough tests available. And well, that was your task, and the measures are going to loosen. So I, that means that you succeeded. Yes. Yeah, so, so amongst others, my task indeed we succeeded. Uh, not that easy because you uh, talk about two different tests. The test you talk about is the so-called nose or throat test uh, with some cotton uh, swab. You take the test. So you need a lot of people from the GGDs and others to take the test. You need a lot of uh, swabs. Uh, then you need a lot of laboratories who can uh, uh, do that test. And we started with three. We have now 50 laboratories. Uh, then you need the support of the suppliers, the Roche, the Thermo Fishers, uh, etc., to provide all those tests, uh, which we succeeded. And then you need to do uh, track and tracing also, again, by the GGDs, um, uh, to uh, look to which people you have been in contact. So we need to arrange a lot of things. We started five weeks ago with less than 2,000 tests a day in the Netherlands. Now, in June, we can do more than 30,000 tests uh, a day, uh, and that is a huge step up. And it means, basically, that we can test all people in the Netherlands uh, who have some symptoms, of course, if uh, not when you have pain in your leg, but when you have <laughs> uh, clear symptoms, you can be tested. And this is a part of our total uh, exit from the lockdown. Uh, it consists out of three different measures. One is in all the different sectors, you need to take one and a half meter distance. And I guess also at the university, you took all kinds of measures to take your distancing. Uh, there where you cannot do that, like in public transportation, uh, we use mouse masks and, and other protections. And the third pillar is uh, the test and, and the tracing. And none of those are water sealed and none of those are 100% uh, uh, effective. But with a composition of and taking distances and using mouse masks where needed and doing tests and tracing, hopefully we can lock uh, out of the uh, get out of the lockdown and still get the spreading of the virus within our healthcare capacity because that's what we try to do. Yeah. And hopefully, with some discipline of all the people in the Netherlands, we can stay in that limit. That's important. Otherwise, we would ever come to a second lockdown. And we don't want that. Yeah, you already gave a short description of how this test looks like. Um, yeah. Our own ICU vlog student, Mera, um, made a small vlog about, well, the behind the scenes of taking this ah, test. Good. And then I'm actually deep in the keel. And then I'm sometimes going to say A to say, but actually by Demi can you see very well, so it's not really needed. Mark, you have here all the materials in. What's going on there now, actually? Um, very simple. The materials come here all in. Uh, dat gebeurt dan in uh, bijvoorbeeld dit soort buizen. En vervolgens ga je de neus in en dan vraag ik altijd om eventjes goed diep in te ademen. En dat doet ze ook super goed. En dan ga je best diep, zoals mensen zien. En dan stoppen we in de buis en dan is het alweer helemaal klaar. Hier zit dan het uh, patiëntenmateriaal met een watje erin. En daarnaast uh, hebben we ook deze buisjes. Er zit een, uh, een blauw medium in. 
Dat is een uh, Alice buffer. Dat zorgt ervoor dat het virus eigenlijk helemaal kapot gaat. En uh, vervolgens uh, eigenlijk geschikt is om een, uh, nou ja, uiteindelijk een nou, isolatie en PCR op uit te voeren. De groene aangekleurde cellen, die zijn uh, de geïnfecteerde cellen, die zijn uh, aangekleurd met corona-antiserum. Hier binnen het Erasmus MC willen we ook graag weten of het virus echt in staat is om nog te repliceren, dus of het cellen kan infecteren. Uh, daarom zetten wij ook van heel veel materialen virus kweek in. Yes, so this part is very uh, well important in tackling mm. this crisis. And as you yeah. said, these are the three steps that well we've taken now. What is what is going to be the next step to tackle this corona crisis? Well, hopefully we can all be very disciplined uh, and take this one half meter distancing, use the mouse mask in public transportation, and every person who has symptoms uh, need to be tested. As you saw, by the way, you need to do that professionally because uh, it goes very deep into your nose or in your throat. Okay. And you saw in the movie, by the way, that it was done manually, the test, but we do it automated in most laboratories. Uh, 30,000 a day cannot be done manually. But uh, those three measures uh, need to prevent that the spreading uh, goes beyond the capacity of our healthcare. And then hopefully we can open more and more sectors. And then we wait for what most likely we wait for to have a vaccine before we can really open all our doors. And a vaccine, um, maybe there will be some vaccines developed in the course of this year, maybe. But before they are ready for really mass distribution and have uh, production at large scale, it will take a little while and it might take into 2021. That means also that for the time being, we will be confronted uh, with this situation that we all need to be very disciplined and, and take care of ourselves and, and each other. And this is not the normal life we had from last January. Or, uh, uh, it looks ages away, but it's only two, three months away that we uh, lived in a different period. And I summed up already, well, a lot of titles that you are bearing at the moment, not even all the past ones, but you're also now part of a committee of CEOs that advises the Chinese government. Um, yeah. And while there are some Western governments that have some distrust against China, some perhaps more than others, um, but how um, do you see the role of China in this crisis? And do you understand some of this distrust? Yeah, I'm advising the Chinese Premier already for six years uh, in this uh, committee, especially on innovation, on urbanization, on sustainability and climate. And uh, I have a lot of respect on how China is addressing uh, those things. Uh, many people move from the rural areas to the urban areas, and there you get problems with your food production, innovation needed, climate change, etc. So I think China on those areas is taking uh, great steps. Uh, on this virus, um, there is some confusion about when did China exactly know it and what came out um, to the media or uh, brought to the to the public. Uh, I cannot judge that. Um, so that's hard to judge. But uh, of course, there are some questions and that need to be sorted out. I need to say that after China um, saw these problems, they took very severe uh, actions uh, and a very strong lockdown uh, to contain the spreading of, of the virus. And we need to conclude, uh, I trust the figures, otherwise uh, I'm, I'm lost if I cannot trust on that. Uh, but the figures in China are relatively modest uh, compared with some other countries. And this corona crisis is also bringing in an economic crisis. Um, yeah. And we discussed it last week with the Minister of Education. But um, I'm, also worry, uh, I'm also curious to see if you have some advice for all those students that are worried that they might not find a job when they graduate. Do you have some advice for them? Yeah. Um, never be scared at the age uh, of 23, 24, 25, uh, come on, uh, uh, try to be creative. Um, uh, I finished also my study. I was the first uh, round of students at the RSM, 
uh, just at the opening of the uh, business administration education, I, I did my RSM uh, study. And also then maybe it was not uh, not easy. Be creative, because look, uh, some sectors will be really hurt at this moment and are not looking for new people. But some sectors uh, are benefiting at this moment. If you look to all the online shopping, uh, we already do online shopping for a while, but only with the early adopters. And now we have a whole new group of purchasers online who were always thinking, well, this is not for me, I go to the shop. But now they were helped by their children or their grandchildren uh, to buy online. And now they get used to it and there will be uh, buyers online uh, for a long time. Um, so there will be sectors, this is just one, who will be winning also and looking for new people. You can always start your own company, uh, own creativity. Um, of course, the economy uh, got a great, great, a big, big uh, hit, and, and it's not pleasant at all, and some people are really suffering. But as always, the economy will restore, and there will be creativity needed, especially from young people, especially from the Erasmus University and from RSM, uh, to help the economy driving again. And if not, you can always follow and do a second master uh, to learn further and to be even more prepared uh, to participate in the economy. Yeah. And I have one final question, because I'm very curious. Um, People are got, people might get a little frustrated that they can't live their normal lives. And well, yeah. if they know that, that you give advice to the government, do they, well, if they see you, for example, in the store or on the streets, are they asking to you, can we go to South France this weekend? Can the wedding of my niece still continue? How is it for you? Yeah, people ask me, uh, some people said, hey, you do a good job, thanks that everybody can be tested, or thanks for helping us out of this crisis um, uh, as fast as possible. Uh, some people stimulate me, please do it faster. <laughs> I, I'm not a magician myself, so uh, I cannot create overnight a vaccine or whatever. And indeed, many people say, hey, can we go uh, on holiday? Uh, I would say be careful with holidays and traveling. I think this summer will still not be a normal summer. We still need to see and to take care that we can prohibit uh, a second wave. And we are now carefully exiting the lockdown, but we cannot be that secure that there's not a second wave. So before we go all loose, um, I think that we uh, need to be very disciplined because the second wave and the second lockdown, especially for entrepreneurs and for some companies, will be disastrous. So um, uh, I would say uh, be careful. We need to realize this is a, a healthcare crisis, of course. This is due to the measures an economic crisis, and it is also a personal crisis. People feel locked up in their homes, etc. But I hope that people can also deal with that last part, the personal crisis, and um, and not go totally loose now with all kinds of events, because that would not be good. Let's not go all totally loose. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you all for watching to this episode. And we will be back tomorrow morning at 9 live. See you back.